Hey folks, and welcome to episode 2 of the Fly Oz Backcountry Training Series. This time around, we're going to give you our take on an often neglected but crucially important aspect of backcountry flying and discuss maximum performance takeoffs. Once again, my name is Lucas, and I teach backcountry flying in the Ozarks in northwest Arkansas. In this episode, we'll talk about counting through the takeoff, utilizing a rolling start, and when and how to use flaps to squeeze every last bit of potential from the aircraft. Let's get started back on the grass in Bentonville with a quick demo. This maximum performance takeoff may be a little bit different from what you're used to in a couple of different ways. The first is that we utilize a rolling start as we come around the end of the runway instead of a static takeoff. The second is that we lift the tail as quickly as possible in order to get it out of the muck and also to prepare for a firm rotation. And the third is that we delay flap introduction until rotation in order to break ground and make ground effect. As we climb away in the Husky, we'll initially leave full flaps until we clear our obstacle due to the high lift, low drag nature of the Fowler flaps. So let's talk about that first concept, the rolling start. By not stopping at the end of the runway, we accomplish a couple of things. First, we carry the rolling momentum that we already had, which is incredibly important when operating off of really soft strips. The other benefit is that we are on a much lower risk of sucking rocks and gravel through the propeller than we do with a static takeoff. Be extremely careful to maintain directional control through this turn, especially when turning left with the major left turning tendencies. Our second goal was to raise the tail as soon as possible. By doing this, we protect our tailwheel, streamline the aircraft, and prepare for the firm rotation to break ground. Next, we dump full flaps and rotate firmly to urge the aircraft off the ground and into ground effect. Flaps are undesirable through the initial part of the rollout due to the increase in drag, the increase in susceptibility to wind gusts, and the likelihood that they'll be damaged by debris thrown up by the tires. Now as soon as we're ready to rotate, all of a sudden flaps are desirable. We want that increase in lift in order to help us break ground. The sudden introduction of flaps aids in a smooth separation from the ground and in a ground effect, and in many aircraft they leave us configured for the best angle of climb. One more important concept is the count through the takeoff roll. It may seem a bit odd, but we don't actually use a specific airspeed to determine when to rotate. Instead, we rotate based on feel and based on a sense of timing built over many, many practice takeoffs. To help with this, we count through the takeoff roll in order to establish a baseline for how our aircraft should perform in any given circumstance. In our count, we should be looking for two big milestones. One is the point at which the tail comes up, and two is the point at which the aircraft can successfully break ground. So let's start our count here at full power. One Mississippi, tail up. Two Mississippi, three Mississippi, rotate. Now be aware, this isn't some magic formula. And how long your takeoff roll takes is going to vary depending on weight, density, altitude, wind, and a number of other factors. The point of the count is to be aware of these factors and to know if the airplane is performing to your expectations or not. So what happens if and when we screw our count up? In this takeoff, I tried to rotate too early. We can tell because the tailwheel skips and the aircraft limps into the air instead of smoothly jumping up. This hurts our roll by about 100 feet because of the increased aerodynamic drag that we've imposed. Now before we leave, let's look at a slight variation on this technique in a different aircraft, a Carbon Cub SS. Now while the Carbon Cub and the Husky might look pretty similar, they actually are very, very different airplanes. One of the biggest differences is in weight. An empty Husky actually weighs more than the Carbon Cub's max gross weight. On the other hand, the Husky's Fowler flaps are a much more efficient design than the Carbon Cub's flaps. Due to the Carbon Cub's low weight and extremely high lift wing, I use little to no rotation to pull the Carbon Cub into ground effect. I actually use the flaps. As soon as ground effect is obtained, I start to work the flaps back to zero and accelerate, before establishing a roughly VX pitch attitude and letting the Carbon Cub do its signature rocket style takeoff. A few more notes. First, be really aware of where your tail is. When operating off of unimproved strips, it's easy to drag your tail through something you don't mean to. Second, be absolutely sure that you have flying speed before you try to leave ground effect in these airplanes. Take a look at the airspeed indicator in this still. Obviously we do have airspeed, but we're still moving so slowly that the indicator is still showing zero. 
If we tried to crank for the sky here, we'd run a pretty high likelihood of stalling after leaving ground effect. Instead, pause briefly to get flying speed before climbing away. Also note that my tendency to climb the carbon cub in a clean configuration is based on purely anecdotal seat of the pants style evidence. Your mileage may vary. My recommendation is that you get with a qualified instructor and run the paces on your aircraft. The basic concepts will be similar, but the timing, flaps versus no flaps for the climb, and other details will vary considerably from airframe to airframe. Thanks for joining us today. Whether you're a pilot looking for backcountry training, an aircraft owner looking for information on Ozark strips to fly into, or potentially looking to charter a flight into the backcountry, check out flyoz.com for more info. In our next videos, we'll discuss tail low wheel landing and tail first three point techniques before moving on to non standard approaches and methods for assessing off airport landing areas. We'll see you next time, so fly safe.